chaos, famously known to give rise to the butterfly effect, can happen only in some cases. The atmosphere of our planet is one of them. But quantum physics isn't. It's a linear theory, and linear theories can't be chaotic. But if we look closely at matter, it's all quantum physics. So how can chaos ever happen? That's a very good question, Zabina. I'm glad you asked, because no one has an answer. I think it's one of the most neglected, if not the most neglected question in the foundations of physics. So neglected that most physicists will tell you it isn't even a question. But good thing you have me to remind them. And today I have a wonderful paper that shines light on what happens in a quantum system instead of proper chaos. Chaos means that small changes in initial conditions lead to vastly different outcomes, like your headline is always just one typo away from disaster. An intuitive way to see why quantum physics can't be chaotic is that chaos requires any small perturbation to become exponentially amplified. But in quantum mechanics, everything is described by a wave function, usually denoted psi, from which we calculate probabilities. And probabilities can't get larger than one. They can't continue growing indefinitely. Imagine being late with a probability of 3.5. Now, that'd be awkward. So what happens in quantum mechanics is that it might look for some while like chaos sets in, but then eventually it doesn't. It gets washed out by quantum uncertainty. This is a fascinating process which physicists study with a rather simple example. That's a particle, either with or without quantum properties, that's confined in a closed area in two dimensions. It gets an initial kick and then bounces off the walls. Whether the motion is chaotic depends on the shape of the boundary. An example that's known to be chaotic is called the stadium because that's what it looks like, a rounded rectangle. For a point particle, the track of the particle never repeats. If you just wait long enough, it'll get arbitrarily close to any point in the stadium, and this is also a sign of chaos. For a quantum system to resemble this, you'd expect the probability of a quantum particle to smear out evenly across the stadium, but this is not what happens. Instead, what happens is what you see in this animation. A pattern develops. There are paths within the confined space that have a higher probability than others. They're called quantum scars because they look like scars on the classically even probability distribution. Exactly what scars you get depends on both the shape of the confined space and also the initial state. Here, for example, you see what happens for the shape of a heart. These quantum scars have so far been hypothetical, but this is where the new paper comes in. They realize they set up with the stadium in a sheet of graphene. On the sheet, they create a boundary with an electric field from an electron scanning microscope. Then they watch how an electron moves around in this confined space. They choose an initial state that should give rise to this infinity-shaped scar, which you see in this animation. Without quantum effect, this shape wouldn't exist. And their measurements beautifully confirm the predictions of quantum physics, as you see in these images. There is the quantum scar. This result aligns perfectly with an early experiment that found that quantum physics doesn't have a butterfly effect. Now you could say that, well, they just confirmed quantum mechanics. What's the big deal? No one really doubted this in any case. But allow me to try and convince you that this is very interesting for two reasons. One is that quantum scars are a new method to guide the transport of electricity and energy in materials. And that could come in very handy for designing miniature electronics. Graphene, which they used in this experiment, is one of the big hopes of the computing industry for new methods to miniaturize microchips. And maybe this will be the breakthrough for smaller, faster, more efficient devices. The other reason this is interesting is that it's yet another avenue to explore the crossover between the quantum regime and the classical non-quantum regime. And we know that somewhere along that path, the measurement problem of quantum mechanics lurks. Studying phenomena like quantum scars could help us figure out how classical chaos emerges from quantum rules. But wait, I heard someone shout at the back, how can it be that there is no chaos in quantum physics? 
when I've read papers about quantum chaos. Indeed, physicists do have a notion of chaos in quantum physics, but it's not the same as in non-quantum physics. It's basically a resemblance to real chaos that can survive for some time in a quantum system. So in summary, the great thing about quantum chaos is that it doesn't exist. They say that no one understands quantum mechanics. I think it's not true. It's totally understandable. If you want to give it a try yourself, check out my quantum mechanics course on brilliant.org. My course will help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.